It's Build a Big Podcast, a marketing podcast for podcasters. This is the podcast about growing your podcast audience, spreading a message with your podcast, making money with your podcast, making impact with your podcast, making something that people care about. Bigpodcast.com is the website. And on that site, my weekly newsletter, this is the audio edition of that weekly newsletter. It's called Big Podcast Insider. It goes out every Friday in New York time. And this is what I'm covering today. Something I've taken for granted. A YouTube lesson for podcasters. What 849,620 writers know about podcasting. Finish your podcast faster. Stolen tricks to grow your podcast. Do we need to talk about your choices? <laughs> We're going to. Also some classified ads things I think you should know about that will make your podcast better. This episode is brought to you by the leading platform to record studio quality, remote podcast and video recordings from anywhere, Riverside.fm. You know the last time I was actually in a studio to record a podcast with somebody? It's been about three years. Used to go into the studio every week with a brand new guest. COVID changed all that and I've kept it up because it's so convenient and using Riverside.fm, you can do the same thing Sound just as good as if you're in the same room, even when you're not. Riverside has unbelievably high recording quality, regardless of you and your guest internet quality. It's also very intuitive. It's easy to use. Your guests don't need to install anything. You send a link. Your guest opens it up in a Chrome web browser. That guest is automatically in the Riverside studio, connected to you, sounding as if you're in the same room. You can try it for free. Riverside.fm is how to do that. They'll give you a couple of hours to check it out. Look under the hood, kick the tires a bit, see how you like it. I think you will. I'm going to give you a discount code to save money on it when you decide to purchase. Here's the deal. Riverside.fm. Again, you're going to try it for free. And this is your discount code. It gets you 15% off. Big podcast. B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. That's Riverside.fm. The discount code. Big podcast. B-I-G-P-O-D-C-A-S-T. First part of this episode, I talked about the different things I'll be covering. Two things you need to know. One, all the links and also more information. You will find it at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also, when I go from story to story, you're going to hear this sound. Just like an old school storybook that you used to have when you were a kid. Remember that? You put that vinyl record on. When it's time to turn the page, you'll hear... I do the same thing. You ready? Here we go. Something I've taken for granted. I grew up in Nashville. I was surrounded by songwriters and musicians. My route to school crossed Music Row. It's two streets, 16th and 17th Avenues. There are hundreds of record labels, studios, publishing companies. So, of course, working in music or any creative industry, that was a possibility for me because I saw it daily. It was only when I left Nashville that I met people that did not know that working in a creative business was possible. Or they didn't understand that making art, let's throw that in quotes, it's a real job. And they had no idea of the amount of work it takes to be successful at it. People are like, oh man, you're just hanging out, man, writing songs. No, no. You know how hard it is to write a hit song? <laughs> and not only do you have to write it, you've got to get somebody to pay attention to it. Kind of like your podcast, right? Every week in Nashville, in Nashville, one city up and down those two streets, 16th and 17th Avenues, at publishing companies where there are songwriters, that have already had success. There are about 1,500 songs written, roughly 200 songs a day. And these are people who've had success. They know what they are doing. They have connections. What do you think happens to most of those songs? Nothing, not a thing, not a thing. So they write more songs. They pitch more songs until something hits. This is hard work, even if you enjoy it. So it's not like, oh man, you just hang out and write a song. No, just like podcasting. It's not like, oh man, just get a microphone, talk in the mic, you're good to go. No, you know that. That's not to say there are not elements of ease. You can find elements of ease within anything. But to be successful at any creative business, including podcasting, you've got to do the work. Let me ask you, are you doing the work? Be honest, I'm not going to judge you. After 25 years in the trenches of doing the work, and I'm talking about self-employment, I'm talking about doing what it takes to turn that wrench to actually get paid. A lot of it has been in podcasting. A lot of it's been in radio. And doing that myself and working alongside other people that are doing it, I know that everybody has moments when we shut down and we collapse. 
I've had a few of those more recently than I'd like to admit. But are you there right now? Are you there right now? Today, as you are listening to this, are you stuck? And where are you feeling stuck? Is there something specific that I can help you with? Let me know. I want you to reach out to me. Blue Sky, Mastodon, Twitter. Wherever you are is probably where I am. Look me up. As I mentioned, all the links, you can contact me directly, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. That is going to help me create future episodes of this podcast that will work for you. For now, in this episode, I've got some stolen promotion strategies from YouTubers, writers, and newsletter editors that will help you to grow your podcast audience. First up, a YouTube lesson for podcasters. You a police fan? Yeah, police. I'm talking about the band, not cops. <laughs> I've got a video linked. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. If you're a police fan, I think you're going to find this funny. Even if you're not a police fan, you may actually like it more. The concept is something that you can use to grow both your YouTube presence and also your podcast audience. I do not focus on YouTube growth. However, there are some parallels. A lot of the same things that YouTubers are having success with, they will work for podcasters. So whether you're doing YouTube or your podcast or you're doing both, this is going to help you. By the way, let's say you're not a police fan. Do you like The Cure, The Smiths, Depeche Mode? This guy's got videos for all of these acts. I think that this is something for your podcast. Let's talk about what he's doing. Desmond Doom is his name. I'm assuming it's a stage name. <laughs> he's doing these videos where he basically analyzes what these musicians are doing. Being that it's a band that you know, how to write a police song, how to write a Cure song, how to write a Depeche Mode song, a Smith song, four very unique acts each with their own style. And he breaks it down in kind of a funny way. This type of analysis, it's well done. It's serious, kind of tongue in cheek. You can kind of laugh at yourself. So if you like the band or you don't like the band, it's going to attract people. The people Desmond is attracting, if you like those bands, you also like what he's doing. That is what he is hoping. So he's hoping when you see the card at the end, that says Desmond Doom, now available on Spotify, you're going to check out what he's doing. Any podcaster can do a similar analysis. For example, if you've got a podcast about public speaking, you could analyze popular TED Talks. If you've got a podcast about social media, you could analyze successful Instagram or Facebook posts. You see this happen all the time. We call it newsjacking. Sometimes it happens in the form of remixes. You're taking something that's already popular and you're trying to sidecar onto that basically taking an existing audience, trying to pick a few people off of that audience, bring them to your stuff. But here is the mistake that most podcasters make. Do not forget the main purpose if you're doing these videos. Yeah, the initial likes and attention are great, but you're trying to bring those people over to your real work. Desmond Doom is a real musician. Like I mentioned, he's got his own music. It's available on Spotify. The novelty stuff with the police, the Smiths, the Cure, Depeche Mode, that's an audience attractor. That is not the kind of art that he makes. I mean, it's art, but it's not what he wants to be known for. And you don't need to forget that if you're doing any kind of response videos or response podcast or remixes, any kind of bonus podcast blogs, newsletters, whatever format that you use to release this kind of content. Do not forget to let people know that you actually have real stuff available somewhere else. This is my suggestion to you. I want you to test the idea, reviewing other people's stuff, and punch up on this, okay? Don't make fun of bad videos. Find things that are already successful. Say, here's why this works. Analyze them. Bring them over to you. Maybe five or six of them to start. Add more if you feel the effort is worth it and see how it works for you. Let me tell you how it's working for Desmond Doom. This is why I bring this up. This happened in the last four weeks. 60,000 people viewed his police video. In the Cure video, 400,000 people over the same time period. If you want to brainstorm some of this stuff with me, how you can do it for your podcast, do reach out to me, Mastodon, Blue Sky. Direct links, plus the videos I'm talking about, are available at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. What 849,620 writers know about podcasting? It's a site called 750 Words. 
It's based on a section of a popular book for writers called The Artist Way. You may have heard of it. I've heard a lot of songwriters over the years talk about it. It encourages people to write three longhand pages of whatever comes to their minds each morning. 849,620 writers have used it. You may find this idea helpful for organizing your podcast ideas and coming up with new ideas. Earl Nightingale, you've heard me talk about him. The Strangest Secret. A lot of people know him for that. The first gold record for a spoken word album. That's how popular this was. He was a legendary broadcaster. He had a daily routine of sitting down with a yellow legal pad and a ballpoint pen. That's how he described it. And he would write down goals as well as his ideas to provide value to listeners and others he interacted with. If you do that, planning episodes, writing, that's where a lot of the magic happens when it comes to having a great podcast. It's not just turning on the mic. Oh, hey, man, this is easy. Turn on the mic and just hit record. (laughs) That's what people think that we do. But the secret sauce that happens before you step in the kitchen. That's the planning, knowing what you're going to say, at least the basic topics. Sometimes you don't know. I've talked about doing these episodes, even with everything written down. And when I say everything written down, I've got an idea of what I'm going to say. I've got bullet points. But sometimes something comes into your mind because you're thinking about it. You're going through the motions. You say, oh, okay, I'm going to go over here in this direction. Let's see if this works. And if it does, you keep it. If it doesn't, you edit it out. This is why you edit But initially, you want to do it on paper. And sitting there with it, running through the ideas, that can be your initial opportunity to come up with this stuff. Then when you go into the studio with it, with all that initial stuff written down, it's a second stage for your brain. You've been sitting on it for a minute, thinking about it. It finally comes out of your mouth, getting it on tape. Then you really start to work through these ideas. So it's a two-step process. This is the first step. Writing your stuff down. Do it every day. It's called 750 Words. I've got it linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also, specifically for podcasting, I do believe that daily action gets results. You know I do this, meaning podcasting, every single day. Not this podcast, but I've got a podcast I call The Sausage Factory Formula. It's an easy concept. It'll take you, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes a day. It's going to make you a better host. It's free to do. I show you exactly where to go. I show you exactly how to do it with the equipment that you've already got. The Sausage Factory Formula. And also, this writing formula, 750 words. I've got them both linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Finish your podcast faster. You work alone? Do you set your own schedule? I love a tool called Cave Day. It's virtual co-working. I don't know if I got into this during COVID or not. I think it really took off for people during COVID. We're all working alone. We're isolated but we don't want to feel isolated. We don't want to feel alone. So what was happening is that people, instead of going to a co-working space, they were sitting at their home offices, at their computer desk. They were turning on a webcam, working on whatever they were working on their computer, while dozens, possibly hundreds of other people are working along with them. You start together, you end together. It's a very cool concept. It's called Cave Day. They use basically what's known as the Pomodoro Method. You might be familiar with this. You work from a timer, Traditional Pomodoro timing is work for 25 minutes, take a break for five. Work for 25, take a break for five. Cave Day does a little bit differently. I don't know, 55 minutes or so, then you take a five-minute break. But anyway, that's the concept. It's more or less working with a timer, and with Cave Day, you were doing it together. As you know, AI, artificial intelligence, that is a huge buzzword right now. Most people think of AI as open AI or chat GPT. You ask it to produce some type of content, it comes back with that content. That is what most people think of when they think about AI. But it is also a very powerful tool when it comes to helping you get through your work and get more done. If you're working alone, there's a new tool. It's called Centered. I like it a lot. Basically a Pomodoro timer, but it's gamified. You're there with other people, not quite like Cave Day. You don't see them. The camera's not on but you're working with a timer and you've got these groups. They are also working with a timer and it's got a leaderboard so you can see how much somebody's worked compared to you. If you're into that kind of stuff, you want to work for more points. Hey, I'm going to work just a little bit harder today because I want to get more points than this next guy. That's great. If you get distracted, maybe your hands off your computer for a minute or you go to Twitter or your email, it'll say, hey, should you really be on Twitter? Should you really be on your email? It's watching what you're doing but it's virtual. So nobody's up in your business. 
It's completely private. They're claiming it will double your productivity. It's only $29 right now. I took the pun. I've been using it for the last week. I love it. You'll see me there. I'm actually thinking about doing a private group on Centered. If you are interested in this, if you pay the 29 bucks, you can be part of this. It's not going to cost you anything. It's just a bunch of podcasters getting together, working on podcasting stuff, working on the 750 words exercise, working on editing, recording, whatever. We're all together. We're working from a timer. We're supporting each other. If that group sounds interesting to you, I've got more information about it. You need the software. Again, 29 bucks, one-time fee. I've got it linked. It's newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Also linked, my Blue Sky, Mastodon, Twitter info. Reach out to me. Let me know if you're interested in being part of that group. I will keep you posted. Stolen tricks to grow your podcast. You may have noticed that I'm a fan, a huge fan, of borrowing, let's throw that in quotes, borrowing podcast promotion and marketing ideas from non-podcasters. For example, I've got some ideas for promoting newsletters that I think will work for you in promoting your podcast. I'm gonna talk about a couple of them here. Actually three, eh, let's make it four. Pin social media post. You're probably doing this, right? If you are, review what you've done. And if you're not, do this. This will take just a minute or two If you want to see examples of how it works, I've got a post on Instagram and a similar post on Twitter. I can show you how I'm doing it. It's at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I did it to promote my latest book, 101 Podcast Episode Templates. Do you have that book? You really should get it. It's easy episode ideas, easy segment ideas that are going to keep your listeners engaged, keep you engaged, and it's 99 cents right now. It's linked, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Anyway, you can see the promotion for that book through a pinned post. How easy is it to pin something, pin something that you want to make sure that people see when they go to your social media. If you're not taking advantage of this, do it and not only do it on one social media outlet, but do it on all of them. So people keep seeing that message again and again and again, something like a book promotion, new episode. Maybe you're looking for sponsors, syndication, whatever. Be thoughtful about it. when you are deliberate about this, you will see it pay off. Number two, other podcasts with similar topics. The easiest person to get to listen to your podcast is somebody who already knows how to listen to podcasts. No, (gasps) right? And here's how to take advantage of that. Being a guest on podcast, buying ads on podcast, or speaking of those 101 episode templates, syndicating a special segment to other podcasts. For example, tip of the week, Q&A, If somebody's got a similar audience and you are a recognized expert, of course you are. you got your own podcast. A quick Q&A where you answer a question from the audience of the other podcast. It's a great way to introduce yourself to other audiences. You can do this on your podcast as well. Do a swap. Borrow audiences and share your audience. Introduce your audience to other people. They introduce their audiences to you. That's number two, taking advantage of other podcasts with similar topics. Most podcasters underutilize these guest opportunities. I will give you an example of this. Podchaser, do you know podchaser.com? It's kind of like all music, IMDb. Let you know what people are working on. It lists me as having appeared on over 2,236 podcast episodes, but only about 30 or 1.3% of those are as a guest. That's what I'm talking about when I say we are way underutilizing this opportunity an opportunity for us to get in front of other people who don't yet know about us. Number three, a signature talk. Most podcasters have an opportunity to speak at live events, even if it's only to talk about your podcast itself and not any of the topics that you cover. Here's the issue though. You don't know when these opportunities are going to strike. So put together a basic talk now so you are ready for this opportunity. Let me give you a tip on this because the other thing that you don't know about is how long this presentation needs to be. Sometimes it's going to be five minutes. Sometimes it's 10 minutes. Sometimes it's 20 or 30 minutes. When you put together your signature talk, think in chunks. Have slides, bullets, topics that you can add or you can remove without affecting the overall message of the talk. For example, let's say I've got a talk, five ways to grow your podcast. It takes 20 minutes for me to get through it. Well, we're really hoping you could speak for a little bit longer. Okay, seven ways to grow your podcast. Well. We only got five minutes. All right, the one thing you need to do right now to grow your podcast. I can get in and out of there in five minutes. 
think in chunks, have this stuff ready. You never, ever know when one of these things is going to pop up. Let me tell you a funny story. You might've heard of Les Brown, well-known motivational speaker. <laughs> Buddy of mine was working with him. He said, man, Les is amazing. This guy has spent so much time on stage. You go to him with a one word, like, hey, Les, I need you to talk about excellence. All right, how long you want me to do it? Four hours, gotcha. He's ready to do it. He's got these things in chunks. He can add, he can subtract. Comics do the same thing. Comics are great at this. If anybody's getting stuff thrown at them, it's a comic. You're up there doing three minutes. Hey man, go a little bit longer. The guy's in the bathroom. Okay, now you got five minutes. Or some dude doesn't show up. Who knows? There are a million things that can pop up. You want to be the guy who's ready for it. That is how opportunities happen. I'll tell you one more funny story. I did an interview with Richard Marks, primarily a writer, but also a huge artist in the 80s. Millions and millions of records sold. Remember Daisy Fuentes, MTV VJ? That is his wife. He lives next to Barbara Streisand. He is a very rich man. He is doing very well. He told me this funny story. Lionel Richie had gotten his demo. This is how Richard Marks got his deal. So I guess they're buddies. They said, hey man, I'm going to be in the studio. Why don't you drop by? Just hang out. Cool. So Richard Marks is hanging out. Backup singers doing their thing but they can't quite get the harmonies that need to be done. So Lionel, main artist, knowing what this kid can do, he's heard him. He said, hey man, you want to go in there and give it a shot? Rich is like, all right. I mean, he's ready for the opportunity. Can you imagine the intimidation of that? Lionel Richie, big time artist. He's been with the Commodores previously. Millions and millions of records sold. You're just a kid. Yeah, okay, I'll give it a shot. Gets in there and he nails it. That's what I'm talking about. That stuff is happening all the time. You want to be ready for it. Preparation meets opportunity. Take advantage of it. The fourth thing for you to know, cross promotion with other podcasts or newsletters. This is another underutilized promotion option. I talked about doing a syndicated segment, a Q&A, tip of the week. That is cross promotion, but it doesn't have to be that. Maybe it's what I call the awesome three. I wrote about this in my book, Big Podcast. Specifically, when you go to a conference, you hook up with two friends, you all talk each other up. Oh, man, you got to meet John. Oh, man, he's amazing. John, come over here. Meet this guy. Oh, you got to meet Sally. Oh, she's amazing. Come over here, Sally. Meet this guy. And Sally and John, they're doing the same thing for you. That's the concept of the awesome three. But you can do this on a podcast. I was just listening to Dave Jackson's podcast, School of Podcasting. He happened to mention me. We didn't plan it, but I know Dave. I think he's done a lot for podcasting. I mention him here all the time. He will also mention me. You know what he mentioned? This. <laughs> the sound effects that I put in. <laughs> you never know when somebody's going to mention you, but having these relationships, that will help. But also asking, hey man, you want to get together and do some cross promotion? Yeah, set up your own awesome three. Do it with three people. You find a couple people, mention them all the time. You've heard it said before, probably a million times. It's a well-worn cliche. Rising tides lift all ships. These four things, more information, all the links. Newsletter.bigpodcast.com <laughs> Do we need to talk about your choices? <laughs> this is the humor segment. You've got to go to newsletter.bigpodcast.com to see it. It's about Apple Vision Pro. $3,500 for this piece of equipment. Is it worth it? Let's talk about something that is. If you only had $100 to spend on podcasting equipment, what would you buy? I've got a list. It's linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Nothing is flashy. It gets the job done. It is enough for you to create a podcast that you can be proud of. My podcasting journey started based on what I had done on radio. I was recording in a studio. I decided to build something in my house. And I use that term loosely. It's a closet. It's tricked out. Had an electrician come in, put in lighting, panels. There are no clothes in here, except the ones I'm wearing. <laughs> but... But it's basically a closet. It's a five by eight room. I wanted to show people that you didn't have to have expensive radio equipment to create a podcast. And I embraced it. ATR 2100s by Audio Technica, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks at the time. The stands to hold them up are cheap. The first computer that I used for this studio, it was something that Dell had sent me because they wanted me to talk about it. So that was free. I've actually got a video, if you're interested in this, it's linked at newsletter.bigpodcast.com. I made it a joke. 
because I talked about the audio book for big podcast, recording it with $500 worth of equipment. Like I said, I'm owning it, owning it. The software audacity, it's free. You don't need to spend a lot of money to get a great sounding podcast. And if you are thinking, hey, if I spend more money, my podcast is automatically going to sound better. It is not. Let's go back to what I said earlier about practicing, writing every day, coming up with ideas, getting behind the mic every day. That's what makes a great podcast. The mics, the equipment, do they help? Yeah, they help. They do. If you listen to the previous episode of Build the Big Podcast, that is me speaking directly into a mic that goes into my computer in my office. There's no sound treatment in the room, no fancy compressors. It sounds different. And if you haven't heard the previous episode, by the way, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That is how to get it. The equipment that I'm using right now, three times the cost. Does it sound three times better? No, no. But it does help. This episode does sound better than my previous episode. Still, you're not going to let that keep you from putting out your podcast, right? There is good enough. It's not tin can in a string. It's not you doing a ramble cast walking down the street with your iPhone. No, 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 no. But, but you don't necessarily have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to buy more equipment to do your podcast. And that equipment alone, definitely not helping you to have that better podcast. Anyway, I've got more thoughts on this, where to spend that $100 that you've got for your podcast and where to spend more if you've got more. All of it linked, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Classified ads for you. Back to AI. This is something that's going to blow your mind. Swell AI automates writing podcast episode summaries, articles, social posts, and more. In other words, this thing's going to do your episode notes for you. Manage multiple shows in one dashboard. Build custom templates for each show. That's going to save you some time. It connects with Google Drive, Dropbox, and Zoom. You can get started for free. You are going to love this. If you do not like episode notes, check it out. Swell AI. It's linked newsletter.bigpodcast.com. And also related, before you get to Swell AI, before you get to recording your podcast, I talked earlier about notes, 750 words, that exercise, showing up, doing your podcast recording daily, audio pen. It is the easiest way to convert messy thoughts into clear text, including podcast outlines. You hit record, you talk, you go from your outline, what you've written that day, and it organizes everything. It's amazing. Step one, step two, step three. It is very, very cool. It's called Audio Pen. I've got it linked, newsletter.bigpodcast.com. Thank you for listening. If you want to make sure that you never miss an episode, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Three buttons there, one for Android, one for iPhone, one with an RSS feed. If you've got a QR code, you can scan it. That podcast goes straight into your mobile phone. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe is the site. Already subscribed? Go there steal a format, you will get more listeners doing something similar. Speaking of more listeners, if you want to work personally with me, let me tell you how to do it. I just recently launched this. It's come out of beta and it is still at a discounted rate available for you, about 50 bucks a month. So it's going to be cheap. You can work with me one-on-one. Instantly get set up with other podcasters that are working just as hard as you are. We're all doing this together, getting more listeners, getting more people engaged with our podcast, making impact and a difference with our podcast and making more money podcasting. It's called AMP Audio Monetization Program, and this is the URL, bigpodcast.com slash AMP, A-M-P, bigpodcast.com slash AMP. Go there now, check it out, and maybe I'll see you on the inside. Until then, thanks for listening. I will definitely see you on the next episode of Build a Big Podcast.